<laughs> yeah, that's there's your fucking intro. Hello, hi. As you can see at the title and from my horrendous singing. Okay, actually you know what? Yeah, that horrendous singing may have just thrown you off rather than give you clue to what I'm actually going to be talking about. Well we're going to be talking about Squid Game. Yes. Good on me, right? You know, just really talking about it just right at its peak. I know I'm late to the party, but I still have some thoughts that I want to like give. I didn't really make a list of my thoughts. So that's probably a bad idea. I should probably, you know, maybe lay out and give a structure to this video. But come on. Me having structure? Nah. So yeah. What are my thoughts about the show? Well, it was okay. <laughs> Here's the thing, like, for something that's been really hyped, and for me to still say it was okay, that's that means a lot. Because, you know, that tends to be the downfall of a lot of shows, when they're so overhyped, and you watch them, and you get disappointed. This show had a pretty fucking great cast like really great cast and really great soundtrack and really great sets each of those aspects definitely helped in building this fucking huge ass global phenomena but yeah why am i saying that it's only okay well here's the thing the first half of this show was pretty fucking great. I like that intrigued of what's what exactly is happening within this game. What is this organization? Why is this happening? What are the motives of this guy in this black mask? Like it makes you question a lot of things. And you know, you're just given little tiny bits of pieces of information that will make you feel inclined to stay and find out more about what's happening within that space. And you know, they're building the characters and you build a connection with them and then you see them progress within the story. And then, where it all goes downhill for me is the VIP episode. <laughs> the one thing that's pretty bad with some shows is the blatant smearing of a message to the viewers. Like, it's not all bad. Like, it can be done successfully. But I think Squid Game did not do that. It's an interesting idea, you know, like, yeah, this Here's some old, um, rich people that has benefited from this capitalistic um, institution of the world. Can just pretty much do whatever they want without any consequence. But the way they gave the answer... Eh, and it felt like it was all just spoon-fed. Here you go. Here's the answers. Okay. Thanks, I guess. As soon as they did that, it was just... I felt like there could have been much more that could have been done. A much better execution upon what which it is done. And it's a fucking shame that the actors they got for the VIPs were absolutely shit. It feels like as if the casting director was just asked Hey, did you remember to get them those um, VIPs, the uh, um, English-speaking guys that will be coming in here with masks and talking all about shit that, oh, they're rich, haha, <laughs> 69. And then the di casting director was just like, yeah, definitely, we, we totally did that. Yeah, 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 I know. Just, everything's fine. But here's the thing though. I feel like um, the second episode is getting a shit ton of hate that it shouldn't. Here's the problem with very popular stuff. People will most likely be fueled action junkies. <laughs> That's 
probably the market that Squid Game has got. And when they got a taste of that action in episode 1 and then see it dissipate within episode 2, they feel like, oh, this is just filler episode. No, it's not. It's fucking not. This builds upon the characters and just shows how desperate they are and how shitty their lives are and when they got back to their lives they realized like oh yeah life's pretty fucking shit and that choice of knowing what's already going to happen if they go back to the games and still going through with it really shows how desperate they are and you know gave some background to the characters and their motivations a filler episode is an episode where nothing happens this very much has a lot of shit happening and you're just too fueled of a junkie to hey, where's the action where's the games we came here for the games the title is squid games it's not squid family <laughs> Shut up. The police plotline though, I feel like it needed more work. It all felt like just very luck based and not that realistic. I find it doubtful that an uh, operation of this larger scale could just be followed and tailed by one police officer that's blatantly following another van and just fucking go under a van and just hold on there until they're boarded on the ship like and then when he gets into the van and there's a soldier in it and he fought for the, against that soldier that van was clearly moving and you know I'm pretty sure a lot of the other soldiers could have heard that or seen it. The man was able to make all that noise and all that ruckus and have some time to change into the clothes of that person and throw them overboard. <laughs> and there's that mask, one of them that really ticked me off. The episode wherein the one soldier was shot, but basically where the soldier shows his face to another um, participant and then gets shot and that mask just falls off into the sand and the police just gets it no like he just fucking bends over and gets it he doesn't even try to hide it how <laughs> how how there's the fucking um uh, needle and the lighter too like how is no one seeing this like those moments just kind of take me out of it like come on what the fuck and then Ali Ali the fucking goat Ali Jesus Christ he didn't deserve episode 6 episode 6 there we go oh let's talk about episode 6 the infamous traumatic episode that pretty much brought a lot of people to tears and I was one of them well not tears I shed one tear and that was for motherfucking ill nam I fucking cried for you how dare you old man how fucking dare you I cried for him I fucking cried for him that's the fucking problem I have with the plot twist they have at the end that plot twist of having the old man organize everything is it feels more shock factor than anything here's the problem I have with that plot twist is that episode 6 is completely undermined because of it well maybe not completely but it's fairly undermined one of the strong elements of episode 6 is the emotional crux it has. Having that taken away from it, it really like damages the, uh, the emotions 
that you would have for the old man throughout the whole series. It's not like one of those plot twists when you watch it again, you'll be like, ooh, you're connecting dots. Like, oh, yeah, that's fascinating. I mean, you can do that too with the old man in the previous episodes, but what's the problem with this is that all, mostly all the scenes with the old man is mainly rooted in emotional connection. And having that taken away, you're just fucking annoyed with the old man, like, fuck off. <laughs> that emotional connection is gone. It's just fucking gone. The watchability is fucking destroyed because of that. Overall, I feel like Squid Game had a good start and kinda just... Well, it didn't completely crash, you know? It just kinda went like it was whoop and then... By the end, it is a fun show. It's a pretty great watch. I just feel like it had potential with its message that it didn't properly deliver. And also like the motivations of the front man. I was more invested in that philosophy of this is a place where everyone is equal. In this world, it doesn't matter who you were, anyone could win, basically. It was fascinating to see the frontman like kill that soldier just because of disobeying the laws of like giving equality for everything in that game. You know, it was a fascinating thing. And then to just have it just be about the VIPs. Just, uh, I don't know. I feel like it could have been better served. So yeah, if you're still with us, with us? Who are us? Who's us? What? If you're still with me, thank you for finishing this thing. That's pretty much it. Bye bye.